Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Tegan and today I'm going to show you how you can rename files easily and transfer information from one file to another using TouchPuzzle. So let's get started. Okay, so let's just start with the balls. So these are just pictures of different balls that I found and we are going to rename them and you can do it like this. We, I just hit the rename button and that renames one file. You can also, Windows have a built-in feature. So you can just mark all of them and then hit F2, which is renaming. And then we're all, we'll call them balls. Yeah, whatever. And the problem with this is that some of these pictures are different file types. So here we have JPEG and PNG and they all, these are called the same thing. So they start counting from one again. If you saw what happened when I hit my button, it says ball. And then I can do it again on this one as well, rename and it automatically names it ball one. And then here. So it just continues like this. And <clears throat> so that is this one, rename. Press key or key press F2 and then write text ball, which it did right here and also on these ones, right? So if the ball counter is nothing, I'm gonna show you that value afterwards, uh, then it does nothing. But if this ball counter, which is a global value that I set earlier, uh, something, then it will also press space and then it will write the text, my balls counter which is the number. And after it has done that, it will also increment the value of the ball counter with one. That is why it increasing with one for each, each of the balls. And then just enter, cause that finishes the renaming of the file. So now I'm gonna show you what this ball counter value is. So we go to values and here I have the ball counter and I'm just going to show you here. I called mine a ball counter, but the ID, which should be different for every value you have, is very important to have lots of underscores or uh, very specific names that people don't use in their plugins and stuff. So if you install a plugin and you have used a name in your value that is also used by a plugin, then you might get in trouble by, um, by editing this value and then the plugin needs that value to be something else. So that could, could be trouble. So just name it something very specific for what you are doing. So my underscore balls underscore counter works excellent at least for this instance so yeah that's the counter and if we want to reset it if we move on to another folder or something like that you could reset it here so the button state goes to on which is just it's just for visual, cause I like to change the visual so I know that it is resetting. And then it changes back to reset counter, which is the original name. Then here for the regex, which is uh, regular expressions, we have the set of numbers from zero to nine and infinitely repeating which means that 
whatever large number you want. If it only contains numbers, then it's going to be replaced with, and I have nothing here. Because I want my first to be without a space or any number. So I'm just replace, replacing the number with nothing. So yeah, that's what's happening in with the reset button. And I'm also going to show you here on the renaming. You could, instead of write text ball, you could say control V, for example, if you wanted to paste something. And then you just have to copy whatever you want the file to uh, the file name to be. I have chosen this just for this tutorial because it's easy. <laughs> okay, so what happens if we click the reset? So I'm just gonna click it now, reset. And it set it to no value at all. So now if I use my auto rename, we can see that it's going to start and it's going to continue until it reaches the end. And when it gets to the end, it just stops. So the auto renaming is here. I have toggle button state. So I know that the button is on. And then I have the repeat 22 times. This is the, let me see, repeat X times. If you choose to run it in a folder where you have, say, four files, press the button and the renaming begins. I can press it again and it stops. That is because I have built in a kill switch kind of. So here we have the, if this button state is on, then it continues. So inside this for loop, we have an if statement. And if this statement is not fulfilled, then it will go to the else. And here we have stop executing actions in current flow, which just ends the script. So while the button is on, we have the F2 rename to ball, ball counter is, and yeah. And we increase with one. Press enter and here is the important step. We go to the right and for us to have a way to break this uh, loop, I have added a 100 millisecond delay. So that's just 0 0.1 second of a delay. So yeah, that's how you rename your files easily. And it's also important to remember that if you have some file names that begin with A and stuff, then it might be smart to sort by date or something else other than name. Because if you sort by name, then it might jump over some files and you have to do those manually. And yeah, it can be a little bit of a hassle. And you can also end up renaming one file multiple times, so it jumps over some of these. We'll say that this file was A something, and this file was A something, and this was also A something. And I'm going to go back and sort by name. If I start with this one and I name it ball, say one on this one, just to make it clear. So when I hit enter, you can see that it's all the way down here. And sometimes it doesn't refresh str straight away, but sometimes it does. And that can lead to problems because if it continues from here on, you have all these other files that were just unnamed. And that, yeah, that's not what we want. So just remember to sort by date or something else. And yeah, that should help. Yeah, and we also want to maybe know how to work with files. And then we have text file is the definitely easiest to work with. So I, I have a text file here with Pokemon names and it's the most important Pokemons, <laughs> the first generation. 
So I have made a script where I copy these values and I also have a filter and I have called it just delete cause a filter does delete. And here is an empty file. So as you can see, if I move it, it's nothing in there. But if I hit the copy button and then paste, you can see it has changed. <laughs> now it's all the same Pokemon that is in the first document. So I could also see here, because I have a value that it copies to Pokemon list. I just called it Pokemon underscore list and Pokemon list, yeah. So we have everything here. And if I hit the delete Pokemon values, it's going to delete everything. So every single value. So this filter just filters out everything. You can use backslash s backslash large s. And it is many other regular expressions you can use. This is, um, this is something that we use in programming all the time. So here are different meta characters and what they mean. And here you have why it works with small s and large s. So little s is for all white space characters and large s is for non-white space characters. You can also use slash d and large d for digits and non-digits and w and large w for alphanumeric characters and non-word characters. You can also look at the set of them and see that this just means the opposite of what's next to it. So if this equals this, then it's going to add up to the total of everything. That's just yeah, how it works. You can also test out your code on, for example, this site, regexr.com for say, if we had the Pokemon list, for example, I'm just going to copy it and add it here. So this is everything. We had, for example, A to C is not going to mark these large letters and it's not going to mark special letters. And the spaces is not marked either. We could use Pokemon. So instead of using the set, we could just copy here and, uh, and paste. And it only takes away this. You can also use a set of say all the vowels. <laughs> so this does not include this. If you want this to be included then you can just paste it in and now it's included. So that's fine. So let's just make a filter here that we could use. Say A can be replaced with something and then we duplicate this, duplicate and duplicate, duplicate again. So let's say A, E, I, O, wrong one, O, and U. And we can replace A with say, large A. E with, let me get fancy here, with an A. <laughs> and then I with Y, O, zero, 
and then u with 3, just for fun. So yeah, we're just gonna delete everything in the copy file, just so we start from new, from scratch. Just save it so we know that it's saved. We can take a look at the values as we make them. Copy, we have all the files or all the names here. Then we use the filter, delete, and then we see Pokemon and with an zero and we have Bulbasaur. So yeah, if I paste them in, this file should now contain whatever was in these values. So yeah, that's how you can use Touch Puzzle for editing your files and renaming your files, automate stuff, and, and it's definitely a lot more you can do than what I've shown. I just gave you some concrete examples and you can use them and change them however you want or however you need. And that's the point with programming. You can learn by doing something that others have done and then you just edit it to your style or your need and yeah, that's how. That's it for now. If you liked it, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.